Hello everyone, this is B. Dan, and welcome to Blender, where I am creating a Star Wars scene. Now, this happens to be your very first episode that you're watching within this series, or one of the first ones of my channel. Just to kind of give you a brief summary of what I am doing here, so y'all don't, you know, I'm not confusing y'all, or y'all not misinformed into exactly, you know, what I'm doing here, so... Uh, this is going to be kind of a more generalized tutorial utilizing as many of the Blender features as possible as opposed to a more specific tutorial like my USS Franklin or the USS Akira class where I'm going more specifically in how to design or how to build a ship from start to finish or going more into intricacies of actual Blender usage for modeling or something. This is going to be kind of a more of an overall effect where I go from modeling to texturing to lighting a scene to rigging, so from start to finish. And if Now, I've already mentioned this in previous episodes, and some of y'all might be pointing, might be noticing that this doesn't look exactly like an A-Wing. I know there are subtle little things which are wrong with this, and mostly that is because of the orthos that I got. They're not accurate orthos. And it's been very difficult for me to try to find accurate orthos to go by. So I'm just using the best that I can. I'm trying to use references as much as possible. Uh, similar problems with the AT, AT Walker and stuff. So I'm just, this, as long as I get it close enough to where you can look at it and be, okay, yeah, that's an AT, AT, and this is an A-Wing Walker, I think I'll be happy. So with that, moving on. I've been working on the A-Wing, mostly the AT-AT -AT Walker, but I have been working on that. We'll see that in a minute. And I'm going to go ahead and for this body portion, finish it out and apply a subdivision surface modifier. I have decided at this point that I'm going, I'm not going to go high poly on this and mold and just you know, every single grid line and detail and everything, because in order to use, show off all the features of Blender, I want to go into bump mapping and displacement mapping and stuff like that. And you can really see like bump mapping and, or the power of textures. If I try to like do all these little grid lines and stuff using textures, as opposed to Blender, I could model this all, you know, every single grid, every single panel into here. But since we're texturing it, let's go ahead and go with that and see how that looks. So I have it set into a layer so I can isolate it itself. And before I do the subdivision surface modifier, oh, and by the way, this episode is going to be similar to the last episode to where instead of me focusing, it's going to be kind of jumping around. I'm going to be giving little tips and tricks. So we might call this like tips and tricks number two or part two or continuation of. So just to let you know, but Next episode, we'll work on some something else other than modeling. Uh, more on that just a little bit. Before I apply this subdivision surface modifier, I want to go ahead and close this entire thing in. I can always subtract stuff out later for like the engines. Well, not there. Here. The engines here, I can always subtract that from this model here if I need to. Which I may not have to, but I want to go ahead and close this all off. So let's go ahead and that's what I was working on. So I'm giving myself a little bit of a lip to show the thickness of these exterior panels. And then I'll bring everything in and then close them off. But I also, before I do that, I want to check my geometry to make sure that everything is uh, loop, edge loop friendly. Like right here, for example, I went originally went and did this where I extruded this piece out here and these pieces out and then created this little piece here to connect it. The problem is with that is that it's not edge loop friendly to where edge loop just stopped right there. I may want this to continue all the way around the ship. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and select these two vertices. Select this vertice here, press Alt M and go to at last. And now if I do a control R, we see that that edge goes all the way across. Now let's go ahead and select also plus if I do a control R and select the edge loop by doing that, it selects 
pretty cleanly almost all the edge loops that I'm wanting to select. I do not want to select these, so I'm going to go ahead and remove those. And let's go to a top down view. And let me turn off where I can be able to see through the mesh. Now I'm going to press E to extrude and press Y because I want to extrude. Actually, let's go ahead and scale this. It's what I want to do, but I want to make sure that I scale only along the Y and Z axis or X axis and not the Z. If I go ahead and scale along all scales, see how it brings it in. I don't want that. I only want it to do along the Y and the Z axis. So I'm going to do scale Y, bring that in. Oops. Why is that? Hmm. There we go. Let me just do that. Okay. Strude. Y. There we go. So we move that along the Y axis. I had to bring it back a couple of steps. Now I'm going to scale along the Z axis. Let's go ahead and bring that in just a little bit more. Actually, let's go ahead and move this. Now that we got it extruded, we can move it where we want it. There, that gives us that little bit of a lip underneath what we're wanting. Now from there, and when we fill this all in, this top portion and this bottom portion should make everything look like it's a... Oops, let's go ahead and look back from the back. I think we might still have a little bit of an issue. Eh, maybe. Let me see from the side. No, we should be good. Well, okay, yeah, I'm going to have to do some slight little manipulations here. So let's go ahead and select these edges here. Oops, no, didn't want that one, wanted that one right there. And now let's go ahead, let's go into vertice, and I want to leave that vertice and that vertice untouched. Let's bring this back to here. That should look a lot better, good. Now we do have this issue here that we need to deal with and what to do with that. Okay, it was a lot easier than what I thought. I just went ahead and deleted the leading edges here. So now that if I go ahead and do this and I select all of these vertices along this edge loop here, and let's go ahead and look at it from a back view so we get a better idea. And I do an extrude and I move everything down. Let's go ahead and while we got that, let's do a scale S, Z, zero to scale all of those faces. Now I can bring that down like so. Bring it to where it's almost in line with that. Now here, what I could do is, actually, I'm going to go ahead and do this. I'm going to go ahead and select these faces here. Go ahead and select one, then press control down there, G. I'm going to move all these faces here. Actually, let me go ahead and select all of these here. Whoops. Let me move everything in line to that. There we go. Yeah, you see, you, you see what I'm, I think you probably know what I'm going to be doing here. Let's go ahead. Ah, nope, selected the wrong one. Select that one. Make sure, whoops. Make sure we're getting the right one. Yes. Control there. Now we move all those vertices up there. And now I can go ahead and select this vertice and connected to that one there we go all right now I know what I'm gonna do so now I go ahead and select 
this vertice and select this vertice and let's move that all back down to there. Okay, now I'm gonna move everything, move everything down to this vertice here. That looks just about right. And let's go ahead now. There is a, let's look at this at the right. Okay, this doesn't look like it's in a straight line. So we are gonna fix that right now. Let's move that back down. Click on that, select that, Alt-M, go to last, and boom. There we go. So now it's almost one full piece. If I go in and look at the edge loops, starting to look pretty good. We get a little bit of an issue right there as you see where it stops. But I'm gonna fix that here in just a minute. So let's go ahead and go down to the bottom and do the same thing here. Select all of, oops, gotta go ahead and first take care of this. Select that, control that. Let's look at it from the back. And move this down. Whoops. Like I selected one too many vertices I didn't want. Move that down. Let's go ahead and select there, select there, Alt M at last. There we go. Now, go ahead and go back to here, select all of these vertices and extrude this is along the Z axis. Let's do a scale S Z. Zero G zero and move that up just ever so slightly. Oops, I made a oopsie somewhere. Oh, okay, I see what I did. All right, hold up, let me fix this. Could be fixed very easily. Here, let's go ahead. Yeah, this is overlapping with that, but this, yeah, that could be fixed. That should be right. Let's see if we can look at it. Is that giving me enough space? Yeah, that, sh that it should. All right. Now back where we're at. To, okay, that actually, you know, actually I think we'll be all right. Let's go ahead and see what that looks like. Control and control. There we go. Let's try it again. Extrude. L Z zero G up, leave it right there, and I'll just go through and select two vertices. Whoops, Alt M at last. I got a little issue there. We need to resolve now. See, we're seeing some areas where we're going the top and the bottom don't exactly match. That's okay. We could fix it just by simply adding in edge extra edge loops where we need them. Let's go ahead and go to the right. Don't have to be exact. There we go. Now here we can just, okay, we got those two there. Here we can actually, let's look at it from the back. Got some additional little edge loops we need to work on. Let's go ahead and add in an extra edge loop there. And once again, we see we got some issues we need to resolve because there's not a complete edge loop there, but we'll fix that in a minute. Once again, let's just go ahead and kind of fix this real quick. And for the sake of time, I'm gonna do this real quick off camera and then I'll be right back. All right, everybody, so far the model's looking pretty good. I got that all squared away. And let's go ahead and take a look at it with all the little additions put in. And it's starting to look, for the most part, like an A-wing. Once again, you know, minus any discrepancies that I'm seeing, because I'm not seeing a lot of reference images, but I don't want to sound like a broken record. So let's go ahead and continue on with this because eventually I'm going to apply the subdivision surface modifiers and I have it already here, but I want to try to go in and eliminate as many of these non ingons where they have multiple vertices or triangles as much as I can. 
So right there's a big issue with the triangle. And if you're not too familiar about why I want to do that, it's because triangles, the subdivision surface modifier just doesn't handle triangles very well. There's a lot of little issues, as you can see right here. And that's all because of using either what's called ingons or triangles. It just it, it prefers to try to have squares as much as possible. And you can see, and we'll take a look at, once again, this little area right here as a before and after. See where it's getting unnecessarily stretched. And if I was to apply that modifier, there'd be extra faces. That would be anomaly faces, anomalous faces popping up that I do not want. So let's go ahead and go into edit mode and just make it easier. So you see here, this is a face that has one, two, three, four, five, six. And I don't want that. So what I'm going to go ahead and try to do here, and there's several different ways I can handle this, but I'm going to go ahead and put in an extra edge there and add an extra edge along the bottom. Now, if we go ahead and go into, look at that subdivision surface modifier, that issue is still there but it's a lot less visible we can just go into edit mode just to see what might be going on here and it looks like let's see if we was to do a con now if we do a control r that will fix that now i think part of that has to do with let's go back let's unapply this Okay, that goes there, that goes there. That's quite possibly with how the edge loop goes. And so there's several different ways that you can do this. Let's take a look at it and look at the difference. Let's kind of learn together here. So I'm going to do Control Z, delete all of this that I've just done. Let's go ahead and put all the edges to go in this way. Let's see how that looks. All right, so we're going to go ahead and do a control R to there. And let's do another control R to there. And let's see what happens here by making all of these edge loops go this way or this way first. And this is all part of experimentation. You just have to kind of play around with it just to see if you can, you know, get the results that you want. And some of y'all, you may just either be working on low poly, so you're never going to use the subdivision surface modifier, and that's fine for you. Others, you might be wanting to use the subdivision surface modifier, and so that's going to be a major issue. And see, that looks a little bit better. That we can work with, and once we put in a, an additional edge loop around there, that will tie that up a lot better. So we still got a couple of issues that we're still trying to work on. I think there's a triangle there that we need to... Oops, that we need to go ahead and try to eliminate. But once again, just for the, yeah, there's a triangle. We need to get rid of that. But once again, just to kind of, um, for experimentation purposes, let's go ahead and delete these again. And let's see what happens if we was to go ahead and put in all of this going this way. And let's go ahead, bring that in, make it visible. and. The difference is not noticeable. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and continue Let's go ahead and continue going the original or with this plan right here. I think I like the results better and it said it once thing that I absolutely hated was to put all those extra edge loops up here in the back, which I wanted to try to avoid. So let's go ahead and do this real quick. Now we have an extra triangle there that we want to go ahead and eliminate. And that actually could be an easy little fix. So what I want to go ahead and do here is extend this out over this direction here and bring it right back into that. And I think there was an extra edge loop that I unnecessary edge loop that I added somewhere that we could probably get rid of. So let's go ahead and first, let's take a look at it, you know, with this all added in and we'll see what we're trying to, what to try to avoid. This little area right here, I mean, all this area looks pretty good, as you can see. I mean, that can be cleared up pretty good if I go ahead and do a control R and bring that all in like that. 
Oops. But we get this little area right here. And this, once again, is where that triangle is at. Now, I could still probably go ahead and do a control R there and bring that in. But see, we're still getting that little triangle. So we want to eliminate that. So let's go ahead and do control Z, control Z, back all that out. So let's go ahead and get rid of that triangle. And we should see a lot uh, better results. And what I'm going to do, once again, is ex put in an extra vertice right about there and continue this along here with an edge loop. So let's go ahead and we'll bring it right back into that. And we'll figure out what we want to do with all of this here in just one minute. So let's go ahead and delete this face just for right now. And if I add the, that's what I'm wanting right there. So let's bring that right there that's pretty good and two three four two three just for right now we'll put a triangle there and see how that looks and now from here let's go ahead and i'm going to temporarily delete this edge let's view from the top let's go ahead and we select that one vertice and I want to extrude, press Z to move that out just a little bit. Let's go ahead, select those vertices. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. There we go. Now we need to put in an additional edge loop right there. There we go. Now let's go ahead and see. Yes. Yes. And yes, that seems like that goes around nicely there. So let's go ahead and go into object mode. And yeah, see right there, it already looks a lot cleaner. And if I was to go ahead and go into edit, oops, let's go ahead and just leave that in and do a control R. I'm going to get one all along that edge loop right there. So that will make that area look a lot sharper and let's look at the back and see whoops, let's go ahead and just temporarily remove that let's see what that does that little triangle there ah uh, yeah i'm going to probably clean that up a little bit but i think for the most part that's not terribly um yeah it's not terribly bad let me see what happens if I everything looks good, I want to try to clean up this as well here because this is also a triangle, and it's I'm not going to say it's it's messing it up too much, but yeah, we could definitely clean that up just a little bit. But once I get that all taken care of, let's go ahead and whoops, not ready to quite keep those all on yet. Once we get that all cleared up and everything, then we'll be good to go. The model, or at least the basic shape of the model will be done, and I'll be able to start adding in all the fine little details. So let's go ahead and jump into a, another model here, and let's take a look at the at Atwalker. So I'll be right back. Okay, and here we are with the at Atwalker, but I first want to go ahead and point out i caught you red-handed george lucas ha <laughs> ha or whoever it was that designed the ad at walker i found now i may, may not be anything new but for me it was a relatively recent discovery that there is an inherent flaw with the way that the ad at walkers are designed apparently these things are designed to where there is no way no way that I could find that the at at walker can be at rest in this position with all four legs perfectly straight. And that is because, and you can actually see it right here in this image here, or see it from the front, these inside toes overlap. And I've... I mean, obviously other people have verified this or have known about this because I took a look at this image 
or at a toy of it. It was a mobile toy, little remote control version of it. You press the button and the legs walk. And they had the same thing. I figured they, with the toy, they might have removed those inner toes. But no, they didn't. You know, so you have to constantly be in kind of a walking mode. One leg has to be ahead of the other at all times. So I guess that it kind of always makes a V motion when it's at rest. I mean, I it would have to because these toes would be overlapping with each other. And I don't see any way they could avoid it. My model overlaps. Uh, toys have overlapped. I'm pretty sure, you know, they've overlapped everywhere. So the one thing that kind of can, that I'm wondering about is that in Return of the Jedi, I could have sworn that the at at walker that makes an appearance in that goes at rest with all four legs straight up. So what happens to the toes? I don't know, but that obviously is a design flaw unless once again they have it to where the internal mechanisms or the, the gears and all of that inside the at at walker. Oh, I need to fix those. All the internal gears of the at at walker and everything is set up in such a way to where it makes it impossible for all four legs to actually stand in that position, which if that's so much the case, then of course my model is definitely wrong, but it's not going to be in this position in the final image. I'm actually going to rig it where we can move the legs to make it look like that it's walking just a little bit, but I don't know whether, did y'all ever notice that before? Or, I mean, is this uh, kind of a new discovery or, or am I just, how should I say, late to the game, so to say, and that everybody's already known about it, and I'm just pointing out the obvious here. But, yeah, I thought that was real interesting, so let's go ahead, and once again, I'm almost done with the basic modeling of this. Having a pill of the time trying to design the, or trying to get the guns, I'm not finding, just like with the A-Wing, I'm not finding very good detailed images on the guns. So I'm just going to just do the best that I can and try to, you know, get as close to where it's comfortably look. I mean, where it it's passable, so to say. I mean, unless, once again, any one of y'all out there happens to know of where I there are some good high detail reference images of the at at Walker's forward guns. I found some fan models out there which I mean they look they look great but you know if this is the conundrum I don't think that the fan models are 100% accurate either oops so if I'm going to I don't want to necessarily steal from somebody else's designs if they designed it themselves I want to try to get it as accurate as possible but I'm just going to just have to just kind of go by feel of what I think that the gun should probably look like and try to keep it as close as I can to what I've seen on screen. It's, I've done this stuff before and it doesn't really bother me too much. I did it with the, <clears throat> excuse me, with the uh, Enterprise J, but moving right along, I've trying to work out all the little mechanisms and everything. And just like with the A-Wing, there's a bit of a, ooh, what the heck happened there? The hell? I don't remember doing that. There's some strange things going on here. I definitely don't remember doing that. Trying to, but anyways, as I was saying, trying to find the right balance between Ew, I mean, like, ew, what? I don't, honestly don't remember doing, I must have moved something without me realizing it. Okay, let's do this. This is the way I'm going to fix this. Let me feel. But, as I was saying, trying to find the right balance between, you know, don't want to get too high poly, but don't want to be video game low poly on this. So at last go. Let's see where how do the, how are the faces look? Okay, good. It separates two faces. So that's for the 
Oh. Really? Oh, you know, I have no idea what I did here. I'm going to have to do some some major fixing here. Try to figure out what the heck I was doing with that. Really? Really, really? Okay. All right. I'll mess with it later, but but I mean it's but with the ATAT, -AT, I don't think it has to be super high poly because it's a pretty much of a boxy model already. But uh, let me go ahead and do some work. So I wanted to kind of point out once again those the little flaws that I've found inside here. But once I get this all bottled out, or I mean or at least and the reason about why I'm wanting to try to get the base model done with is so I can go ahead and kind of do the rigging because once you go from the rigging you can continue to model the you continue to model it even further you know but before you do a rig I mean say so you don't want to necessarily rig like a, a a box and then with another box and another box and then rig it all up and then try to subdivision that box out too much with it because then when you start to to try to move it around it's going to it's going to get real funky you're going to create problems but as long as you get as much of the base down as much as possible as close as it can to where it looks relatively accurate then you can go ahead and rig it you know put in the armatures and rig it and assign all these individual pieces to each one of the armatures and stuff like that then we can go around and start actually moving the object into the scene and oh excuse me just burping all over the place but i'm almost done i just got to figure out what type of little funky thing went on there and work on the guns and some other little additional details which are part of the base models minus details and then from there we can really start trying to flesh out the details with with this and what I'm talking about with high poly or low poly is what all details do I want to try to model into the ship as opposed to do I want to allow to just be a texture you know let textures take care of it you know it's, it's like uh, for example you know well, these little hall detail like these little details here I can go ahead and probably model in but these little small de or little let me put it this way little rivets if I want to put in go in and put rivets into these do I want to model those rivets in or do I want to just use textures to give the illusions of rivets that's what I'm talking of about and definitely rivets I'm more than likely going to be going with the idea of using textures instead of mod because that'd just be just downright mental why why go through all that trouble modeling no details such as that? And I, 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 I really got to fix this. Let me go ahead and fix this body because it's annoying the heck out of me. I'll be right back. <laughs> 